the effects of cycling on your body, internal and external. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, let me explain who I am and why I post these types of videos. I am simply a 78-year-old man living in Connecticut and cycling daily up and down the little hills all around my home. I have experienced large and welcome changes to my body from cycling, though not huge legs or 20 waist, but rather a change in my sleep, appetite, weight, and just plain amount of energy I have when I jump out of bed in the morning. I don't go on three-day biking trips or even bike for more than an hour at a time as I do like to rest, take pictures, and observe the beauty of the outdoors. And I must admit, when biking through a town or city, I have to stop for coffee and snacks and sometimes charge my bike battery. I'm not immune from shopping or browsing old bookstores. Living in the New England area, I find it impossible to pass up lobster rolls when I do come upon them. Thank goodness I don't drive to these locations in a car as I would be grossly overweight if I did. We experience a series of changes in our body when we are cycling. Weight loss and leg muscle mass growth are two examples of external changes. Others cannot be seen, but we feel them, like better sleep, for example. In a number of studies, it has been shown that exercising on a bike for 30 minutes a day is associated with a longer life expectancy than the people who do not exercise. A series of internal changes that take place in our bodies are the reason for this. Let me explain what I mean. Internal effects of cycling on our body. The most important change is an improvement in our cardiovascular health. While exercising and at rest, our hearts grow stronger and bigger, and they become more efficient. This lowers the risk of a heart attack as well as lower blood pressure. We are able to breathe better when our lung capacity is increased. Since our muscles are well oxygenated, it takes the body longer to feel tired because the blood efficiently transports more oxygen to the muscles and quickly removes the byproductive energy combustion. As you may know, our cells contain mitochondria, which are responsible for converting carbohydrates, fats, and proteins into energy. When we ride a bike, we tell our body that we need energy, which causes it to produce more mitochondria to provide us with the energy we need. Additionally, if we follow a training plan, our muscles will work more efficiently, and the muscle fibers and mitochondria will be able to adapt to what we require from them. Our article mentioned at the beginning that cycling improves the quality of our sleep. In fact, there are several reasons why cycling improves the quality of our sleep. As you know, Taking part in exercises makes your body tired and it needs to recover, which it does when you sleep. In addition to this, cycling reduces cortisol levels, which in turn makes it easier to fall asleep. In a recent study, it was found to be essential for a good mood and a good night's sleep if you are exposed to sunlight while cycling. In a study conducted by Stanford University School of Medicine, researchers found that those with insomnia who rode a bike for about 20 to 30 minutes a day were able to rest better and fall asleep faster. As a result of cycling, our immune system is also greatly benefited. With a healthy heart and lungs, good sleep, and good mental health, it is easier to recover from illnesses or infections. On the other hand, the internal changes are far more profound. It is possible that you have heard about T-cells in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, known as lymphocytes. These are special lymphocytes that play a crucial role in our immune system's ability to fight new infections and adjust to them. The authors of this study have found that adult cyclists between the ages 55 and 79 have more T-cells than people of the same age who do not exercise. The amount of T-cells that they produce was similar to that of 20-year-olds. Other positive effects of cycling include managing and preventing back pain by strengthening our back muscles, especially the lumbar area, we protect our spine. Metabolic rate increases. Because of that, cycling makes us hungry, reducing the retention of fluid. When we pedal, our legs move, but we also sweat and get rid of the fluids we retain when we don't move. External effects of cycling on our body. Cycling causes our bodies to lose weight and strengthen and or increase the leg muscles and gluteal muscles. Weight is not the place to go crazy. There is no need to go crazy as far as weight is concerned. To begin with, simply start cycling, even if it is just going for a 30-minute ride or just commuting to work. Overcoming inactivity and adopting an exercise habit is already a major accomplishment in itself. Trying to lose weight quickly with some fad diet will set you up for failure and a rapid weight loss rebound if you push yourself to lose weight too quickly. Pedaling does help you lose weight, but just like miracle diets, 
it doesn't do miracles. How many hours you spend riding your bike does not matter as much as what you eat, together with healthy eating habits. Daily exercise is the most effective way to not only lose weight gradually, but to maintain overall good health as well. Additionally, don't trust the scale as it can be quite treacherous. The software only provides you with numbers without telling you what your weight consists of. Is it fat, muscle, fluid, or stored glycogen? A person's weight change depends on where they start and the type of exercise they do. When you are simply cycling for fun or riding a bike as a means of transportation, you might not even notice the physical change after a while. There may be some clothes that are too big for you. People you haven't seen in a while might tell you that you look thinner and your grandma might want to give you an extra serving of dessert. After cycling for quite some time, you may find that you have plateaued or even gained weight. Change your training mode to get your body out of its comfort zone. Alternating intervals with more intensity is also an option to modify your workouts. You'll adapt and improve your body as a result of the different challenges every day brings. Is it necessary to buy new pants for my new legs? It depends on how you ride your bike, what kind of training you do, and what kind of pants you wear. Observing the professionals, you'll see that they have cyclists' legs, but that each one shows different muscle development. Sprinting cyclists are an extreme example. Their legs are so big that they need tailored trousers, but most of their muscle development comes from gym workouts, not cycling. Those who commute by bike will notice that their legs become leaner and more toned as a result. Cyclists have developed their main leg muscles more, glutes, calves, and quadriceps above all, adductors, hamstrings, and soleus to a lesser degree. Your cycling workout and additional gym sessions will have a large impact on the development of your leg muscles. Cycling increases the muscles of the legs and buttocks, but does not affect other parts of the body. For this reason, it is important to exercise other muscle groups as well. The idea behind this is not to increase their volume or hypertrophy, but to maintain an overall balance and to avoid losing tone and strength in their upper body. There is no simple answer to what one gets out of cycling as the experience is so all-encompassing both physically and mental. Throw in social and mental challenges and you have a wonderful excuse for happiness. In all my years of driving a car, I have never reaped the same feeling getting out of a car after a drive as the feeling when you complete even a short bike ride. So no matter what you want out of your biking experience, I hope you do get some exercise while biking and learn to enjoy the outdoors like I do. Hope to see you out on the trails and roads in the future. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to get my new videos as I post them. So don't forget to hit the bell to get that reminder. Thanks for watching. This has been Gary's Resolve.